What's up YouTube team? Sorry I'm a little bit behind today or this week. I'm supposed to be recording this video of this. It's right here, check it out. Uh, the ferret plus camera. But what happened was is I got sick. None of the Omicron stuff. It was actually just a, uh, a sinus infection and it knocked me out for like four days. Who would have known? Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna try to go to two houses today. I wanna see some of my inspectors since I've been out of the field for so long. Uh, Josh and Josh and James are on a big house, which is surrounded by stucco, which I might find some stucco stuff for y'all, so that's always interesting. And then I'm gonna head to Brendan, which he's a little closer to downtown. It's a little bit of a trip. I'm gonna do my best to make it, but uh, he has like a flip and has a crawl space and sometimes whenever you have that clip and I'm at the flip with the crawl space it's kind of a mess sometimes so um let's see what we're gonna go find let's go check it out okay showing up on the job it's a little noisy we're right next to the highway so I hope the audio comes out well Actually, one of my other inspectors, he's job canceled this morning. So he showed up to this job to help out. And you can see they're all on the, the roof right there, making sure you, they can climb the roof safely. Uh, you know, someone holding the ladder on the lower roof there. Um, the drone probably wouldn't fly in this location right next to the highway. They normally block us off. Uh, one other thing too is uh, we have our company party and I'm going to do a, a little bit of video clips from that kind of record how the year went uh, and Mary goes over a lot of our numbers too as well. So um, let me show you some of the stucco stuff that I see just showing up. Okay we're here on the west side of the property and we have this window and right here above the window you typically want don't want to caulk right here you want some sort of drainage path or some sort of some of these windows are do have overhead flashing built in with the type of window so what we do is we only call it out if we see any type of water penetration inside so right now we don't and so what we would do is recommend to remove the upper caulking here so if any water did make it behind uh, the stucco in this location it would have a drainage path to leave. But very common call outs right here. Uh, also need to reseal the stucco. Typically you have to do this every five to seven years. In Houston, I'd say every four, but recommendation is five to seven. And you do have some discoloration. This is normally due just from rainfall, but we do have some nice clearance on the from the ground. You have four to six inches which is good. And then it's always a good idea right under windows to reach up to see if you can feel underneath uh, to check the weave screed and then also to see if you can feel the substrate. I couldn't get my hands behind the, the weave screed enough. Here, let me show it to you. Uh, you couldn't, couldn't get the, couldn't feel behind that, but typically if it is leaking, you would actually see signs of um, you see signs of rot and stuff falling out from uh, this portion of the stucco. So uh, pretty common call out in this location, just reseal. You got the fire flu, it's kind of close to the window. Three feet, right? Three feet, yeah, it's too close. Um, we'll call it out, are they gonna fix it? No, uh, but we need to seal up the, uh, the top of the the fire, the fireplace chimney flew right there. So this is Josh, his job canceled, so to keep himself busy. He's actually our lead stucco inspector. He's coming over here and you can see he's checking the weave screen, like underneath the weave screen, like I said. Probably hard to find damage in these locations, but you never know. Went sealing it around, you never know how long it's been leaking. So one of our first steps before we even ever start drilling or anything is you'll test underneath the stucco in those weed screen areas. So we are on the um, north side of the structure here and you can see that we have a heared stone veneer and 
you always want to pay attention to something like this. See, so yeah, there's a lot of efflorescence and you have some of the stones falling off in this location. But one of the biggest things that you notice here is there is no drainage plane. So if water did make it in this location, such as say, say this uh, kick out flashing isn't performing and water was making it behind the wall here, it wouldn't drain out properly and the stucco won't dry. It'll just rot out the whole wall. Um, actually, typically you'd be able to see some type of bulging in this location. So uh, this wall is probably fine, but I'll show you a location that I do recommend it, I would recommend a drill uh, right after this. How many inspectors does it take to inspect a wall? All of them. Yeah, just, just the whole Big team. Eyes. Yeah. Eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was supposed to be this Josh, and then this Josh decides to help just because, yeah. The number one. Uh, Josh number one. <laughs> Just because he's the bigger Josh. Josh says he's actually not inspecting. He's just he's just following around writing he's the report. Here for comic relief. Comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are just trying to get to the margaritas faster. All truth aside, that's what it is. Yeah. I called him one time and I said, hey, you got any big jobs people need help on so we can get them done? He's yeah. like, James and I are on a 52 on it. I said, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> so this is the location that I was telling you about with the stucco. And you can start to see some type of bulging or they had some sort of patching in the past. So right here, you can see how the roof stopped, but the wall continued. So it is required to have kick out flashing, which, which it does right uh, but this kick out flashing normally fails not normally let's say it is known to fail uh, but if you could see this stucco you saw how the other wall was kind of flat but right here you have some sort of bulging or patching happening in this location and then also you have some type of like see like water lines or some type of material runoff and on the base here you have no weed screed or drainage plane off the heared stone veneer. So this would be a very common spot that the stucco has been leaking for a long period of time and caused rot. Also, if it wasn't, if the gutter or the um, kick out flashing is not performing properly, it's fallen on the light fixture, water makes in the light fixture over a long period of time, cause rot, mold, water intrusion into the type of the property. So if you see this as any type of inspector, what I recommend doing is Recommend to get this tested. You'd want to do some drill tests right about here a little bit And if you caught rot you want to come down a little bit further and a little bit further and even at closer to the, down to the bottom To see how far that rot has traveled uh, in your intrusive stucco test So uh, this is a very common find on older stucco properties And it's something that you want to keep an eye out for this uh, this bulging here. Let me get a little bit closer for you I guess to an untrained eye that would look like nothing, but this has obviously been patched, painted. Something is going on in this location and you'd recommend further evaluation. Okay, uh, here's another location. So you have this uh, big window here, right above where the stucco ends. So you have the stucco ending in this location. And then again, think about if this window leaked, which all windows do leak eventually, because you can even see here that this, the, uh, the caulking is a little bit of damage. You have a little bit of efflorescence growing on the window too as well. And so say this window started leaking, which it kind of might be, and water travels down. Well, where's the water gonna go, right? Well, where the stucco stops, you are required to have some sort of type of drainage path and the stucco should be open in this location. So the wall could allow the could allow the water to dry out um, and it ha doesn't have that so this is another spot that you would definitely uh, do recommend for an intrusive test we drew some drill holes underneath the window to see if the stucco is solid or not and if it's um, if it's rotted out would we be able to see on this inside probably not the, the, everything's really patched and painted and re looks really nice inside so uh, something to keep an eye out for. Um, I don't really see any bulging, which is nice. And also, there's just this one little 
baby crack right here, but typically you would see some discoloration to your, if it was really bad. But you never know until you do your intrusive test. So I'm just going off of what I can visually see here and visually predict. Okay, here's another location. So you can see here, you know, where the wall ends here, but the stucco, I'm at the kick out flashing, uh, isn't pointed in the right direction. And then also you have this location too, where the wall kind of stops and the flashing continues. And we have some minor cracking here. You just want to keep an eye out in these locations, you know, for excessive moisture in these locations. But like how you would do that is just like I said before, what you saw Josh doing is if you can get to the weep screed, which um, I can't. Yeah, it's kind of stuck. So you'd want to reach up underneath the wall and see if you could uh, feel any type of rot or see any rot. But again, it's kind of difficult. But so we're going to go off of what we can see. Right, so we don't see any type of bulging. We don't see any type of efflorescence. Don't see any rot. Uh, the stone seems to be pretty flush. They don't seem to be falling out of place or anything. So I wouldn't say that this is leaking, but again, as a visual inspector, you don't fully 100% know. And we got enough information across this property that we are already gonna recommend for a, um, for an intrusive test but this location here you go this is exactly what i'm talking about here i can reach up underneath and i can feel the substrate and uh, uh the substrate's really solid in this location that was my add kicking in for you but uh yeah two other locations that you want to keep an eye out on and uh really focus where the the water might be coming in to the structure Okay, sorry if I seem a little slow in the video. Still recovering. I just really want to get back in the field. Hate, hate sitting inside so much. <laughs> so, um, recap. A lot of people don't understand, like, say we do find rot or damage to the stucco. What does that entail? Well, the only way to fully repair stucco, it's got to come off and you put it back up if the wall's rotted through. Say if we find a little bit of moisture and the wood's still solid, you can you can patch the, the water penetration and add in a drainage plane in those locations and save the wall. This home is a little bit older, so if we do normally find type of water penetration, it's been happening for a long time. It typically ends up being, you know, thousands of dollars to repair. Just one wall typically in the Houston area is $10,000 to fix. So you gotta think, you know, if our property's average cost is around $400,000, you, I, this one's probably obviously a lot more because of location, but you have to start thinking about is the home worth the purchase or not? Or are they gonna negotiate on the stucco repairs of what needs to be done? So that's it with the stucco. Let's go head out and see Brendan and uh, see how he's doing over there with that uh, little uh, bungalow flip thing. I don't know what it is. Let's find out. Hey, one other thing is, uh, you're an experienced inspector and you're watching these videos and comment what you see you know comment what you see in these videos that can really help uh, the other inspectors you know I might not be covering the topic well enough shoot could probably even help me too you never know so uh let's head to Brendan and uh, see what we find over there all right made it to this little bungalow thing here with Brendan he said he found some stuff on the roof oh he waved let me catch it found some stuff on the roof he wanted to show us so we're gonna check that out the crawl space is too tight to get into but I'll show you as much as I can and we still have enough to ride up so uh, let's climb up this ladder and uh, see what we find you can also see on the edge there where it's starting to lift up because it wasn't uh, adhered down properly and over here in this area this is my favorite over here in this area you can see where the roofing material does not go over the flashing <laughs> that's going to allow some water to come in mm -hmm. that's not good and then over there yeah yes over there we get the flat roof with shingled and that's supposed to have the flat roof material not shingles oh and there's a nice there's a nice damaged flashing right over here come on let's go check it out <laughs> What's growing on that roof back there? 
feel like a pointer dog. <laughs> right in there. Oh, okay. You got a little split boot right there. Yeah. Let's, Let's go. go check out that interesting route. Yeah, I don't think you should walk on that one. <laughs> Pile going right here with some termites. You got termites on there? Some uh, WDI evidence. There's evidence of previous infestation. No. Uh, oh, some wood boring. Yeah. No liveies. Not oh. yet, anyway. This is a uh, into the garage, isn't it? Uh, it's either a garage or a slaughterhouse. <laughs> this is interesting. This is Houston. So you got this little bungalow, right? And then you're surrounded by all these townhouses with missing dryer caps. So whenever I was telling Brendan not to walk over there, uh, you could see really underneath that uh, the garage roof structure, how rusted and it is. And you can see some areas that are starting to fail and fall apart. And then also you can see where areas that are just wide open so um i don't even know what this would cost this is what i'm talking about in the houston area you just don't know what you're gonna get with these old old properties this is 1940 and you made a joke like it may have been an old slaughterhouse could have been <laughs> who knows uh but yeah well all you do as a home inspector is you document you report and something like this, we wouldn't even be able to give you a roundabout quote on. Home inspectors don't really give quotes, but this one is out of your norm. And so we'd recommend we further evaluate it to our, our roof contractor. And I don't, I don't even know, the disposal cost of this would just be astronomical if you wanted to repair it to begin with. So whenever you're inspecting a crawl space, one of the biggest things that you wanna keep in mind, especially in the Houston area, is water drainage and you can see here that um, there's a lot of little low spots outside so if we do have a heavy rain we can make it into the crawl space um, this one is too uh, small for me to really crawl so we're gonna see as much as we can visually right so um, a few things to note is we can see that they have replaced the plumbing at one point in time so you can see the old galvanized water lines right here. You have the new PVC drain lines. That slope looks questionable right there. Uh, we'll probably end up writing that up. We'll look around. You're gonna write up all the debris. And you know, whenever I'm smelling in here, you wanna use a lot of your senses. I'm smelling like a musty, a musty smell. Like you can see how flat you see how flat it is in here? Uh, so if water does make it in to this property, there's no there's nowhere for it to go. Um, and then all that wood debris invites termites. So if they don't want to clean the wood debris out, we're definitely going to recommend for some sort of preventative treatment because this thing is a termite gold mine. Um, it's not if this property gets termites it's just a matter of when some good signs though is that they did replace all the cast iron you see all the cast iron in here so we'll inform the client about that so when it comes to these slopes and whatnot uh, one thing that we like to do is we'll test and run the showers while we are inspecting the crawl space so what brendan did is he filled up all the showers he ran all the tubs, released them, and then he stuck his head down here and watched the water as best as he could run through the drain lines. And if you can see way back there, let's see if I can hold all this together and use my laser pointer. But you can even see the, the dampness of the ground in that location back there. So also adding the fact that there's not very good drainage in here. The ventilation seems pretty good um so we know that it's not a ventilation problem it's more of a um it's more of a moisture leaving the crawl space altogether issue okay about the crawl space i know 
that crawl space to you might actually look really bad, but actually overall for the age of the home and the condition that it's in is actually not too bad. It's been repaired, it's been updated. It just has uh, some few minor leftover tasks. It doesn't seem minor, but it actually is kind of minor in the big scheme of things when you're buying in a 1948 property. So, but we are gonna recommend for further evaluation and repair because we can't really crawl in there too much. And if those things aren't taken care of, the foundation will fail. So um, yeah, that's how we're gonna address that one. You do recommend further evaluation and fail, but we actually also let them know it's not as bad as it could be for a 1948 property. So we just try to educate our client as much as we possibly can, especially for the age of the property, kind of get them the full idea of what they're purchasing. I hope that made sense. All right, so for real, we're headed to the party now. Brendan, you're at 407. <clears throat> Inspections. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm. Uh, Dave is at 169. Uh, Josh Gibson, 246. James Lee, 244. Uh, Josh Donahoe, 310. John, or, yeah, John Howe, 210. Mark McKinney, 157 already. Very good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Will's at 29. And Tyler breaking an all-time record for a action, even beating Chris Murphy, <laughs> is at 464 inspections. Wow. Oh, what? <laughs> All right, so reviews. We there's been a twist. There's been a turn of events. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so Dave, this is in the last month since the last meeting. Dave, you have one. John Powell, Josh Donahoe, James Lee, and Will tied for two. Wow. Tyler and Brendan tied for four. And Josh Gibson got five. What? Which means Josh Gibson gets the belt. <laughs> After a whole year, the belt has been passed. Um, you'll have to come out with your walk on your day. <laughs> yeah, he's putting it on. Yeah! <laughs> for total reviews, this is for the most reviewed inspector for A Action. Our final numbers come out to Will has a total of 6, Mark has 18, Dave is at 32, James is at 39, Josh Donahoe, 47. Unfortunately, Gibson beat you by 1. He's at 40. Oh. Yeah. I know, that's unfortunate. Um, John Howell's at 53, which is amazing. Wow. Yeah. When did, when, did you actually, did, when did you actually start? In June? Yeah, so since June, you've gotten 53. That's really impressive. Tyler's at 73, and Brendan, no surprises there, and at 85. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There you go. That wraps up the year. We have a we do have about two more weeks of inspections for the guys, but uh, that's not the final final numbers, but close enough. And um, we have one more podcast before we wrap up the year, and I think that's about it. So I'm excited about how the year was done. You know, we had our ups and downs, and we had our successes too as well. New team members and. Uh, everything's always a learning lesson. That's one of the biggest things I've learned by running a home inspection company. Uh, just take take the hits as they come and the successes as they come to as well and treat them as equal. <laughs> um, so that being said, one more podcast. We had a fan reach out about a lot of new home inspector questions and new company questions, how to run a company. And we're going to answer that on the podcast. And now we'll wrap up the year and that's it. You know, we'll go back at it starting all over in January. All right. Thanks for following along and keep an eye out for the podcast and always like, and subscribe and ch 
<laughs> Always like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.